Calgary Pride proudly serves Treaty 7 on the traditional territory of the Nitsitapi Confederacy, Ayajenakoda, and Esutina. This land is also home to a Métis nation of Alberta, Region 3, within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. This place, where the Elbow River meets the Bow, is known by many names to many people, including Mohinsis, Winchespa, Kutsiso, Otoskune, and Calgary. We thank the indigenous communities of Turtle Island for both the historic and ongoing stewardship and protection of the land we collectively inhabit today. Many nations and people, indigenous and non, are fortunate to call Mokinsis and Treaty 7 territory our home. Acknowledging this land is indigenous protocol, which we honor as a step towards reconciliation and fulfilling our responsibilities as treaty people. Working alongside all nations, indigenous and non, we strive to create safe spaces where everyone can live openly and authentically. Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Nicolas Martinez. Today we have a very special guest with us, Justin Lariosa, who is not only one of the greatest dancers I've ever seen, <laughs> but also one of my friends from high school. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. So tell us a bit about what you do right now. What, what are your projects? What have you been up to? Um, definitely all involving dance right now. Um, I'm a freestyle dancer, so, like, I sort of, like, just, like, train wherever I go. And upcoming, I'm going to Vancouver for a competition called Vancouver Street Dance Festival, which happens, like, every year. And then there's also a, um, something called a, a, a Vogue Ball. Basically, it comes from ballroom culture that started in, like, New York, um, underground yeah yeah and it was like it was a whole culture started by like black and like latino um gay and trans um members of the community it's just like a a celebration and also like competitive <laughs> you know what's crazy i actually uh sought you out yesterday because i was in downtown in the area and you oh, posted really? that one thing on your story about uh, about Vogue, YYC. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to the building in 12th Avenue, I believe. And I met uh, Shandy, is it? Oh, really? Yeah, we had a chat about dancing and all that stuff, like the stuff you guys are practicing. Mm -hmm. And she told me all about ballroom dancing. Because mm -hmm. ballroom dancing to me, like you picture it. And it's kind of like, you know, the, the traditional, you know, with yeah. a partner and all that. And she's yeah. like, no, 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 you got it all wrong. It's mm -hmm. this movement, this underground... Um, dance movement that came from New York and mm -hmm. those areas and it happened like during the 70s I believe something like that yeah and it involved like a lot of minority minority communities which mm -hmm. I thought it's great that you guys are representing by the way thank you <laughs> but yeah had a chat with her and uh that's where I learned about the Vogue group and all that stuff yeah cool that you met Shandy she's like been like a teacher to me as well yeah she's been dance. doing this for like what five years now Four? Yeah, it's been definitely longer than me. I don't know, like, when she started exactly, but she has, like, lots of experience. Yeah, she told me she was managing the, the, the dances over there. Like, you can just, like, there's this entire building of dance studios you can rent. Yeah, the it's called um, Decidedly Jazz Dance Work or something. It's DJD for short. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they have, like, I think five floors of just like studios and like it's right almost near the center of downtown so you're like out looking all the the buildings too it's really cool yeah i was amazed yesterday i was sitting in the lobby and like on my right they're dancing to like this very classical style with classical music almost like a waltz in the background mm -hmm. and then on my left there's this kind of like k-pop going on yeah and then behind me it was a uh, shandy's class or so more 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 modern, more street like styles mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, they they train like a whole bunch of different styles there. And yeah. also, she told me that you were in a uh, drag me to brunch. Tell us about that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, drag me to brunch. It was part of the the big cowboys festival that was like I think like a week long or something. Um, they basically got some 
some queens, some drag queens from the show RuPaul's Drag Race. I think it was it was Jinx Monsoon, uh, Lady Camden, Evie Oddly, and Monet Exchange. I don't know if you know any of them, but they're on the show. <laughs> I should. I should know them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, it was just like a... There was a whole lineup of different performers, and there were also like local artists as well. And so I performed with Vogue YYC and... Yeah, it was just, like, a lot of fun. The stage was, like, huge. The The whole, like, venue was completely packed. I think it was, like, 8,000-plus people that we performed in front of. And, yeah, it was really fun. It was, like, one of... It was my first gig and also, like, the biggest gig I've ever done. So it was, like, an honor being being invited to perform. Yeah, I can't imagine from... Uh... Well, from since I met you at uh, at high school, yeah, we were, like doing the theater and Mamma Mia and mm-hmm. what else was oh, after memories. that? Mary Poppins and all yeah. that. What? How many people fit in that theater? Like three hundred, and yeah, now I think performing in front of eighteen thousand people. Yeah, how 8, did it come 000. up? How did the uh, how did the opportunity come up? Um, honestly, through Vogue YYC, I'm very close to like the members there. They they're very sweet, very very friendly, and yeah. Um, one of my mentors, her name's Katria. Shout out to her. <laughs> <laughs> she she like treats me as like her kid. Um, so she's like been been a great like role model and inspiration for me. And because of her, she has like all the connections. So she helped me like get into that that performance. So I know you started it with this dance, this career, this path back in high school around. Correct me if I'm wrong. Senior year was it? Um, I think, like, grade 11 to senior year. Yeah, around that time. And how did you, how did you stumble upon it? How did you discover it? So, funny story, my cousin's ex was my (laughs) first teacher. And I didn't start off with, um, like, Vogue and, like, uh, this other style whacking, which I'm, like, now more known for. I started with breaking popular known as like break dancing but like that's not the the correct term that's more of like the commercialized term i guess is that how you broke your foot <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> <doing> breaking <laughs> yeah <laughs> fun fun fact i broke my foot um and i was out for a few months but anyways <laughs> yeah i started with that style and i started like competing at battles and then from there, I just, like, kept meeting more people in the community and, like, branching out from different styles and just kept building, building, building. And, yeah, I'm now in, like, a my own crew, um, which they're, like, family to me now. Cause, like, What's we their do name? Everything. What's their name? Shut them out. Blase Crew. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Blase Crew. <laughs> But yeah, that's how it started pretty much. And they've been with you since the beginning. Yeah, because we, we all do like different styles. So it's sort of like a a well-rounded team, I would say. So all, all of this representation that you guys do as um, dancing, you know, different styles you pull from different cultures, black, Latino, queer. Mm-hmm. Is it a, does it make a more comfortable space to be in, do you find? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, um, especially because they're around, like, our age, our generation, they're very accepting and, like, understanding and just, like, I find it easy to just, like, be myself. Um, I don't have to, like, sort of, like, compromise some personality or, like, hide any parts of me. They just, like, they just get it, and, like, I don't have to explain anything, and they're just, like, very chill and accepting. Yeah, because even when I, like, when I saw them yesterday, I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm glad I did. Like, there were people wearing all different types of outfits, dancing, whatever. So I feel like it's a very free space to kind of discover yourself in it. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the same experience you had? Yeah, um, especially with dance, because sometimes... Like, you can't find the words to, like, express your, what you're feeling, like, inside. So, like, even with dance, like, it's an, it's an ex- exploration. And, like, it even helps you, like, unlock things, like, within yourself, I guess. I was never good at dancing, by the way. Like, even in the, even in the musical, I always had uh, trouble with the joints and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the steps. But I can see 
the most experienced ones that they're almost so free free to move their bodies but they're also in control Mm -hmm. so there's always that balance which i really appreciate in the art like yes there's that aspect of freedom that you can express yourself through it but you also have to have enough control of your body to perform it right yeah how do you find that balance like what do you what do you practice how many hours how many days um (laughs) that's a hard question i think it just like comes over through time i guess taking taking classes or just like studying other people and then just like just doing it yourself because it really just depends on like your musicality how you how you interpret the music i feel like it all it all circles back to the music which is like the root of dance like once you understand the music then you can like it doesn't really like matter how you move your body as long as like you're connected to the music i don't know that's kind of cheesy but <laughs> <laughs> Can I, yeah i see what you mean like the, r- the rhythm mm-hmm. i know salsa i know bachata i know merengue oh you know, nice if you don't know that you <laughs> my mother told me you're not latino so i had to <laughs> learn it and yeah. it's all about the rhythm you gotta be your ear has to be trained for the drum beats, you know, because mm-hmm. they lead you. And um, so aside from dancing right now, what are, what are you doing, like uh, studying wise? Oh, right now I'm taking my degree here at U of C for film studies. Um, but it's like the the two and two um, program, I guess. So like I'm taking two years here and then two years at SAIT. So, yeah, I'm I'm interested in film. I'm I'm sort of like taking it easy right now with that. I'm not like going out and doing like any projects i'm more like focused on my dance right now but like after i graduate then i'll really like dive deep into that yeah it's exciting and it's mm-hmm. a growing industry i'm very very glad that you're doing it mm-hmm. i'm also doing it as well on a at state right now Ooh. and um <laughs> it's taught me a lot it's taught me a lot it's certainly something that you gotta dedicate yourself into mm-hmm. but do you have an idea? Maybe there could be like a blend of um, your dance skills with the film industry. Yeah, I'd love to like blend the two. I'm not sure how yet. Maybe like choreographing for like music videos. I don't know. Or Dirty just dancing taking like four, or five. <laughs> what are they on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. I don't know. Just taking cool videos for now. I guess. I also want to like eventually work in like actual like films and movies and stuff um what's your path right now like directing writing eventually i want to get into directing yeah that would be cool i like it sort of like started with back in high school when everything starts back in high school yeah (laughs) um when we had to like direct the the stage plays yeah, yeah. oh remember that 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 was amazing that so was fun just for context we went to bishop o'burn shout out to bishop o'burn high school yeah shout out <laughs> amazing theater program there and they gave us the ability to kind of choose the plays that we wanted to direct mm-hmm. and also write them and everything in this big big stage and from that is where a lot of our passions came from yeah like theater like dancing mm-hmm. and it always had this one musical every year which they put a lot of effort into a lot of budget a lot of money went into it a lot of love and it was one of the highlights of the school mm-hmm. so it's understandable to see where <laughs> yeah where the passion comes from and all that but yeah i'm glad to see that very very excited because that's where my passion also came from mm-hmm. from theater and all that i'm like yeah how can we explore it further mm-hmm. and with cameras and we put like lights and scenes and all that like when you step into film it's a whole new world but it still has traces of theater into it yeah exactly a little bit uh some variations but like within the same realm what about uh acting because you used to be an actor back then yeah back (laughs) then (laughs) um it would be cool i definitely want to explore it more i'd have to like get some more like actual training in um but yeah i do i kind of want to do it all i want to act i want to direct <laughs> i want to write um it would be cool to be like the the actor um in future projects i think with that one i have like 
a little bit more self doubts, I guess. So like, I'm not too ready with acting. Yeah, I don't but know. But you've had the most experience. I know it's it's weird. I I'm just very self critical. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what makes you a great dancer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the key. Yeah, forces myself to get better. <laughs> yeah, but acting acting's a ton of fun. At eight on your first year, you get to direct you get to even do the sound mixing mm. the cinematography and you learn a lot because it's hands-on mm-hmm. so wait wait are you going um next year is it right yeah this this fall this fall yeah so how has the ufc program been so far because i, I kind of skipped it i went to state right state away first. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was good it's very it's very theoretical very like actual like studying and stuff and, like the techniques and Yeah, just like the theory of it, also some history and very you do also like learn like how how the camera works, but it's not hands-on. So like I feel like that's the difference between like SAIT and UFC. Right. That's why I'm excited to go to SAIT because it's more hands-on from what I've heard. Yeah, it's very very hands-on. I wasn't a tech guy. Mm-hmm. I'm still not a tech guy, but I know more about tech than when I first joined, say, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like before, it was just writing. I wanted to get into directing and producing. Mm-hmm. Producing is a lot of fun. Mm. You get to talk to a lot of people. Yeah. So regarding, like, films and all that, you tell me you want to be a director also. Is there a story, a specific story that you got in mind? Perhaps one that, you know, it's about a community that's not well represented. Yeah. I definitely want to... Um, like direct stories that represent queer people, um, especially um, like the the BIPOC community, like Black, Indigenous, POC, um, because even within like the LGBTQ community, as like welcoming as it is, um, like white privilege still exists even within our own community. So I really want to like highlight like POC stories um poc queer stories for sure um i take like a lot of inspiration from like moonlight um call me by your name i know they're white but <laughs> moonlight isn't yeah moonlight isn't yeah moonlight isn't i really like moonlight i know la la land fans hate moonlight though <laughs> i know <laughs> Uh, for that Oscar mess up haters, for context haters gonna hate <laughs> <laughs> yeah Moonlight deserved it in my opinion so <laughs> yeah it's great to hear that great to hear that maybe you could also mix in that aspect of dance you know mm-hmm. the greatest inspiration I've discovered that when making my own films comes from your own life experience mm-hmm. so you were wondering if you want to mix your dancing life with your um, film life You could always do like a coming of age film yeah. about discovering your true self through dance. Mm-hmm. And I know there's lots you're going to say, oh, there's lots of that type of story out there. But none are going to be as unique as yours because you're going to take inspiration from your own life experience. Yeah, which exactly. Which no one else has lived through mm-hmm. but yourself. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely a possibility. Definitely a must. Yeah, a <laughs> must. <laughs> One day, it'll happen. Manifesting it. (laughs) Manifesting it. (laughs) Yeah. So from the future, do you see yourself um, staying in Calgary or pursuing this film and this dance somewhere else? Um, I've had thoughts about moving to Vancouver for, um, like, career-wise. But I don't know. I I flip-flop between staying here and, like, moving to Vancouver I might I might test the waters and like maybe live in Vancouver for like a year or so just to see what it's like and um yeah I want to like also try to make connections in like LA Hollywood if possible one day that's like a bigger goal um, Shout out to any connections out there this man is looking for some Yes please <laughs> hit me up <laughs> Yeah I don't know. I'll I'm just going to go with the flow, I guess. Yep. I don't have like super solid plans, but like if the opportunity like comes up, I'll definitely take it. Well, it's I mean, it happens to everyone. Like yeah. no one has super 
solid plans from the get go. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta have some experience first, and then from that experience, you gotta make your plans or decide. Well, maybe I don't like. Uh, maybe I don't like photography that much. Maybe I don't like cinematography. I'll go the um, the gaffing way, the lights. Yeah, the, exactly. The tech, the grips. Mm -hmm. So it's really based on testing the water, and I think that's at your age, that's what most people are doing right now. Yeah, just figuring out as they go. True. And everyone has that one dream about, you know, going to Vancouver or going to LA mm -hmm. until they check their bank account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the, f the finances. That's the problem. Yeah. That pull you back to reality. Huh? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Cause like, I didn't think that I'd get this far or like so deep into dance, like a few years ago. And like, just within like, last year like so many opportunities have been like coming like one after the other which like i didn't even expect to happen um super grateful for it but like yeah like it sort of like blows my mind and i'm like very grateful of where everything is headed at well it comes with testing the waters you know the mm -hmm. first step is getting out there getting out there doing some work meeting people mm -hmm. and then opportunities will just they find their way through you sometimes you have to go and look find for them, them. Yeah. yeah and look for them but it's it's certainly the first step you already took it mm -hmm. you're in the water you're swimming now you gotta stay afloat yeah and exactly. stuff like drag me to brunch this folk team that you have mm -hmm. i mean they're like a life raft so you're yeah. pretty you're pretty safe on board that's a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's my um my LAIB self talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. IB throwback. <laughs> throwback to high school. Yeah. What about um were, were there anyone else from high school that was in dance? I can't remember. Um not not that I know of. All my other friends went to other high schools so oh. yeah um i have friends that like dance here and then but like we're not in the the same like dance scene i guess because a lot of my friends like to do like more choreography stuff um like in in the studio i'm just like freelancing i go anywhere and everywhere and just like freestyle more that's good that's good because when you when you're kind of freelancing it mm -hmm. you meet all kinds of people yeah and like about two months ago i was working on a set with previous state students mm. made lots of wonderful connections um shout out to the children of r then we will come out by like september it was Ooh, fantastic it was exciting. one week but they all had this this one this one kind of like energy which brought them together and it really it really draws to the like the indie scene you know of calgary mm. it really warms my heart to see that it's very very welcoming to the arts yeah i'd say even though even though it's growing it's just a little bit but eventually it'll get there eventually hopefully we'll get to uh toronto level vancouver level mm -hmm. i know we can i mean alberta's filled with beautiful landscapes beautiful opportunity exactly and even extremely extremely talented people mm -hmm. so i know we'll get there someday and like you said freelancing it is the way to go mm -hmm. you make connections you um meet new people and you each support each other yeah exactly i love i love like indie indie movies um coming of age anything like that um i don't know why it just like has a it connects to me on a different level for some reason. I can't explain it, but feeling wise, like I just love love that type of movie. And I think as a culture, we've kind of been seeking them for a while now. Mm -hmm. Like A twenty four used to be an indie stu an indie studio. Technically They're... it kinda it kinda yeah. is a little bit of indie still. But you know, as more people are seeking it, it's becoming more popular. And, you know, what I really like about them is that they highlight voices and personalities, which you really wouldn't hear much in uh, mainstream Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like that that movie, uh, Everything, Ever, All at yeah, Once. Yeah, I was just going to wow. mention that. 
I, what what a staple for representation literally, and yeah. what an achievement for you know mm-hmm. underrepresented groups. Yeah, I I'm completely obsessed with that movie. <laughs> um, I think it actually moved up like my personal ranks of like favorite movie of all time. It's like really up there for me because um, I went to an early screening of it at the. I forget the the theater name, but it's in downtown. Um, Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, So I went there and literally I cried like so many times watching it (laughs) because I felt so represented and like the cinematography, the acting, like everything was just like so perfect to me. And like, it's, it's my favorite. Um, Cause we had like, they touched on subjects like um, immigrant households, um, generational trauma, um, queerness, um, like divorce, everything. Like it just everything everywhere all at once. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and also, do we go to the same movie? Because I spend like most of it laughing. Like, because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's that it's that combination, that powerful combination of just comedy and drama at the same time but Mm -hmm. it's impactful stuff Mm -hmm. like it's stuff that you didn't just shrug off yeah and i think that's that's what really drew me to the movie Mm -hmm. the the ability to balance things yeah my favorite movie is groundhog day which is a comedy most people view it as a comedy but looking at the script and looking at what he goes through what bill murray's character goes through it's a very very philosophical journey i think Mm. and that's the same thing that i felt with um Everything mm-hmm. ever all at once. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Because, yeah, everyone can, like, interpret a movie differently as well. So so right now in the dance scene, what, what are you looking forward to? What future plans you got, like, that are recent, you know? I want to definitely improve, um, sort of start getting... Because... I, I compete a lot, so I want to, like, for myself, I want to be able to consistently make it to, like, the finals or, like, semifinals, um, just, like, improve personally. And also, um, there's some exciting stuff happening with Vogue. I also want to improve there. Um, maybe join a house in the future. Well, what um, do you mean a house? Give so, us a little bit of context. So, in ballroom, um, historically... Um, So basically, people that joined Ballroom, um, it was a lot of the community of the LGBT, the LGBTQ community um, who may have like been living on the streets or like been kicked out. And so in Ballroom, people form houses. Um, It's basically like your chosen family. Um, And then within a house, there's like a mother, a father figure. Um... And whenever you, like, compete at balls, um, you're competing under that house name. Okay, okay. I thought it was going to yeah. be a little bit like Harry Potter. No. I'm glad there's no Slytherin house. <laughs> no. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone will create a Slytherin house. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great to hear. That's great to hear. And it's amazing that, like, knowing you from high school... And, like, watching your journey progress to, again, like I said, performing in front of 300 people, performing in front of 8,000 people Mm -hmm. at Stampede. Yeah. That is a huge achievement, and you should be, like, extremely proud of it. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's been amazing. And, like, you too. I've seen your growth from high school, too. (laughs) Like, you setting all this up and, like, studying film and everything. Very cool. 